Hey, what's up? I'm Matt Wyatt. Thanks for stopping by my channel, where I use my experience as a player and a broadcaster to explain some things about football that might help you enjoy watching the game a little more. I want to talk about Texas A&M versus North Carolina. This was a close game in that Orange Bowl up until the fourth quarter, but over 200 yards of offense and 24 points in the fourth quarter allowed A&M to really pull away, and they did it primarily on the ground. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we look at some of the stats in this ball game, as I said, you look at the comparison here. This is primarily on the ground. So if you look at just the fourth quarter and kind of isolate that, you can see what I'm talking about, how A&M blew the doors off with 126 rushing yards in the fourth quarter alone, which is something to, to speak to, only 78 passing yards. And it adds up to 200 yards of offense and 24 points in the fourth quarter, 24 to seven in that fourth quarter of the ball game. So how'd they get it done? Well, a lot of it was on the ground. In the game, they had six pass plays of 15 yards or more, but you look on the ground, they had seven rushes of 10 yards or more in the game. And in the fourth quarter alone, a 76 yarder for a touchdown, 11 yarder on the same drive to get a 22 yarder down to the one yard line. And these are the three plays I wanna break down with you right now. All right, here we go. This is during this tie ball game. And you see this, there's only four minutes left in the game. And, uh, well, you really can't see it, the score. Let me move this for you. <laughs> there's four minutes left in the game, and we're tied 27-27, right? And this is an old-fashioned counter play that's going to go out the backside uh, for big yards. So let's watch it. Uh, counter, follow the pullers, get around the edge, block from the tight end. And then he just stays up. This is a true freshman kid named A-Chain, Devon A-Chain, who's going to be a real star. He's a sprinter. If we back this up and kind of see how it happens, well, we can just see it from behind. Let's look at it from this angle. They gave us another one here. What you've got is, again, good old-fashioned counter. Now, he's lined up to the side of the uh, tight end H-back, lined up just kind of off the, the uh, line of scrimmage there, lined up behind him. And so his first step's here, counter. He's coming back this way following the pullers. The action up front is important. They are in a three-down defense right here. And whether it's nickel or not, you know, we've got four next-level defenders. So it's kind of like a good old-fashioned 3-4. And what happens is from the backside over, everybody's blocking down this way. Well, not that guard. Let me back him up. And the tackle is also. And that action, along with the step of the back initially this way, tells these backside defenders, oh, the ball is going away. So what you're going to see is, for instance, this defensive end step down in here to his left that allows it a little easier for the pulling guard to get around here and hook him and keep him inside. We'll, we'll see that here step for step. So uh, we move it forward. I promise we're going to snap the ball in a minute. Here we go. So ball snap. Now you see what I'm talking about. First of all, let's go back and look at the guard. You can tell from this alignment. Like if you were up close, you could tell, hey, look at this guard. Look at this right guard right here. He's off the line a little bit more so. He, he's in a position. He's getting ready to pull somewhere. So that's something you probably ought to see if you're on the field, right? But, again, you snap the ball. Tackle steps are here. Guards here. Center's here. And so this end on this side where the counter's coming back to, he's following this movement down to his left and inside. When he does that, it just makes it that much easier for 73, this pulling guard, to get to his outside shoulder and seal him inside. Step of the back kind of holds that defender on the edge right there. So the guard's pulling around. The next puller is that up back tight end. He's going to look for the next level and find him pretty easily. It's blocked really well because the pulling guard now has hooked up and sealed that end who stepped inside. Tight end's job is to find the next uh, outside, and the back's going to follow him. And uh, he gets it done. You know, there's a little bit of a hold in there. You know, he pulls him with his hand. The other defender you see in the screen who's right here, he's on the center. If we were to go back and uh, watch the center's steps, it's almost like a combo on that uh, three. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I said the center. This is the guard. He steps down. It's almost like a combo with the center on that nose guard that then kind of classically the, the guard works up to this linebacker, but the linebacker actually beats him to the outside. You'll see his head 
be to the outside of the block right there. That's what I'm talking about. So he doesn't seal him off. He's on him. The linebacker's trying to get outside of where the ball is. But because the tight end is in position making his block, it's up to this back to get to the outside. And he doesn't really have a, a clear path to the ball carrier either because of the tight end in his block. Again, a little bit of a holdup right there, but I'm not really sure it matters. The other thing that's happening is you can barely see it, but you got slot receiver blocking downfield. you got outside receiver blocking downfield. And this ought to be enough. And this is a good job by the back. Keep his feet. Run through contact and take it to the house. A freshman in a big spot breaking a tie game in the fourth quarter. All right, this is actually a defensive play. I thought I'd throw it in there, though. After they scored that long touchdown, UNC had the ball. They go for it on fourth and one on their own side of the field because there's only two and a half minutes left, and they get stopped. I want you to watch these three defenders right here for A&M. Okay, so stand-up linebacker, safety walk down, and a defensive tackle. They motion, they go zone, they tries to pop to the backside. The safety has stepped in here and is going to hit him. That outside linebacker is inside and he's going to hit him and they're going to stop him. He falls short and they mark him down short, about a yard short of the marker. Here's what I want to show you though. All right, if, if you go back to the other angle, if you go back to this angle, uh, just watch tw uh, 27 and 3. Those two get the credit for making the stop. But it's not them. Now, they're there, but the guy who is credited, I think, that they didn't point out on TV is 92, the defensive lineman. Watch him not give up on the play. They don't even really block him. They just kind of are in his way. But instead of watching the ball carrier get in a hole, look at him chase it down from behind. And because he is lunging right here, trying to get there, these two guys are free and unblocked, and they kind of hit him, but he's going to spin off of it. And I think if 92 isn't there at his feet, I think he's spinning off those two others, the, the end and the safety. He spins off of those and makes a first down. That's what I think. Even if he doesn't completely keep his feet in a big run, he's going to fall for the first down. But because 92, the defensive lineman, didn't give up on the play and is chasing it to try to get there from behind, he's the one who gets around his feet and keeps him off this spin move from being able to pull that foot around and get his balance, stay up, and make the first down. He's the one that made the play. So after getting the football, they're going to come back on first down, and he bounces it. This freshman back bounces it to the outside, and the key block here actually comes from the tight end H-back. That's what gets him to the outside, so watch the play. They block left. Zone is designed to go here, but he's running to daylight, going to bounce it, and he can because the tight end is hooked and driven down inside the edge on the line of scrimmage defender. And then this is a deal here that I'm seeing from a true freshman back. We saw it on the long touchdown run, and that is make that first guy miss one-on-one. -on -one. He's yours. That first unblocked defender, he's your responsibility if you're the back. you got to make him miss, and he's got lightning speed, and he made him miss. Okay, and that 22-yard run was the third play of this last scoring drive, just straight zone run out of the pistol and two tights to the left side. Running behind, tackle, and tight end. Squeeze it through there. Get one block. Make two miss. Run through contact. You're down at the one. And I like this because there's really a lot to point out. But that offensive line is really good, first of all. But look at the formation. So Pistol, he's behind the QB. And it's four receivers because you have two tight ends, but they are both in that hip form formation. And the formation itself is really tight. Nobody's really wide at all. So it's bunched in there. So defensively, you see a lot of bodies, four on the line of scrimmage, three here. Or, or really with a stand-up, it's like a three-four uh, defense. But true, seven in the box. Pretty clear what the defensive uh, formation is. They're going to run this right off the hip of the tackle. That zone is kind of where this is actually going to go. So if you take it forward, there's a couple things happening. <clears throat> One... Tight end, H-back, responsible for the stand-up defensive end linebacker, one-on-one. -on -one. Next to him, tackle and guard are sort of combo off the defensive tackle up to the next level. Let's watch it happen. What happens is this is an outstanding block. One-on-one, -on -one, that tight end is absolutely eating up the edge of the line of scrimmage. The other thing is the next guy, the defensive tackle, is getting blocked one-on-one -on -one by the guard. 
So it's sort of a combo with the tackle, but he didn't even have to really do anything because the guard has just chewed him up. And by doing that, it sort of stymies everything else from flowing through to the ball carrier that way because of that block of the guard, right? So the hole is already there. I mean, automatically the hole is already there. And then to add to it, you're going to get a nice pickup here, receiver stepping up on the safety, and that'll leave only two defenders, linebacker backside trying to run it down, and cornerback play side trying to stop it up that have a chance to make this play. Show you one more so you can see it develop. Just one-on-one killed him. One-on-one, the guard is eating him up right there. Here's a block on the safety. That You're running behind the tackle, and not only has the tackle not blocked anybody, he hasn't had to, and you're already to the next level. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. And so he's stepping in there without anybody to really to block. If you'll keep an eye, again, backside linebacker seven is going to try to run it down. Corner's about to step in here and do a really poor job. But as I said, if you're an SEC running back, your responsibility is the first guy in the next level I can get you to unblocked. He's yours. You have to make him miss, and he just runs right by him. Runs through the contact of the backside linebacker, makes two guys miss, take it down to the one-yard line. Again, you see it working right here. Here's a really good picture of that combo, left guard, left tackle. Tight end's done his job, but the defensive tackle kind of got stuck down inside, and so it was an easy combo. So just automatically, oops, here we go. I moved my screen there. There you all can see a little better. Automatically there's a hole that uh, he can step through and take myself off. Now you can really see it. He's through here, going to run off that block. Follow big 65. Great job by the tight end. Run through the contact and take it on down. And the reward, you get a short fourth quarter touchdown right up the center's rear end, or right behind him. It actually goes behind the guard. Stick it in there for a touchdown. So anyway, that's kind of how it happened. I thought I'd point that out. Anytime you go and you rush for... You know, what was it, 120-something yards in the fourth quarter, 200 yards of offense in the fourth quarter, and 24 points in what had been a tight tie ball game for three quarters. I thought we'd point that out. And, oh, by the way, that running back and all those highlights, true freshman, A-Chain, remember that name for Texas A&M. Uh, he's really going to be a star. Thanks for watching. If you like that, do me a favor. Hit the like button, and that really helps me a lot. I appreciate that. And also in the comments, Thank you so much for all the suggestions over these last few videos. People commenting saying, hey, you know, you could do a video on this. And what about Texas and all that? Uh, really appreciate it because those I'm, I'm going to do many of those ideas you sent me. So if you have one uh, idea for a film study or a commentary on sports or any subject that we could cover that maybe I could help with, hit me up and let me know. And on social media, hit me up there as well. I'm Radio Wyatt pretty much wherever you look. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.